Hi again, how you doing? This is Bjorn Thorkelson, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about using the proportional divider that's found in the accuracy measurement system in and of itself to help you get proper proportions in a drawing. The size of the base to the size of the apple. I'm going to be relating the width of the base to the height of the apple. Okay, so everything's going to relate to the apple. Using this tool here, and what you do is, you can see there's lots of different holes. If you want a different size relationship, for instance, right now, if I'm looking through this and the apple is, fits within this, within these parameters, the tip there, it's going to transfer at that size. Now, if I want it to transfer to different size, I just go up and down the ladder here of the holes and kind of choose a different relationship, okay? Just so you understand that. You know how to take this thing apart. You can just kind of up and down the, um, switch this thing up and down. So, at this point, I'm just going to use this size relationship just to demonstrate the technique or the process of using this. Um, so, we talked about the reason why I like to have this thing loose is so that I can manipulate it with let's do this. I can manipulate it with one, with one hand. See? Up and down, up and down. In this case, I'm using my middle finger. Some cases, I'll use my thumb, just depending on the situation and what I want to do. Another important aspect of actually measuring with this thing, you got to keep a consistency with your, that's why I have my arm out straight. There's almost no other way to really maintain consistency that you need. If you have your arm like this, every time it's going to be switching slightly back and forth. Just the same principle as when you're measuring with a pencil, okay? Um, so arm straight out like this, and I manipulate it up and down. There we go, I've got the size of the apple, all right? And what I'm going to do is actually transfer the height of that apple. Okay. One thing you could do is actually, you know, basically put that apple in there, get an idea how it's going to look. Just like I do with my other measurement system, is I'll actually kind of from the size of that apple, I'll kind of guesstimate where everything else goes. Then I'll come back and check it. It's a good way of checking yourself and actually learning while you go. Okay, but what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to show you how I would approach checking that top base. Okay, Let's see where it goes. So what I do, first of all, you have to go back to the actual apple you have on here and you'll never move these tabs. Okay, these tabs are going to remain in place for the entire drawing. Tip top to the bottom, there's the size of the apple again. Now, without moving it, I go back to the spot and make it so that apple fits within that space again. There we go, we got it. And it's important that I keep my arm straight and try to keep it on the same plane. Okay, there we go. That's the height of the vase. You can see, whenever I'm like holding my proportional divider too, I don't hold it with two hands. I always um, hold it with just one end, okay? Otherwise, you're going to move it for sure. So there we go. There. There. Top of the vase. Top of the vase. Bottom of the vase. Now, I put the bottom of the vase slightly higher than that apple because it's, you know, uh, on the picture plane there. Um, now, what we have here is a basic size relationship. We've got the height of the vase as compared with the height of the apple. When you're using a pencil um, to do this measuring technique, what you're doing is you're focusing on the apple, right? You get yourself all, you really have to be rigid with the pencil. There, and go. It's a little under three, right? You're basically accomplishing the same thing um, in just uh, with less movement, okay? With less um, opportunity for error, okay? Um, so there you go. In one measurement, you've got the size relationship there. Now, in order to get the width of the base, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I need to find out where the width where this side hits in relationship to the apple. And you can do that, um, first of all, if you've done um, alignments, 
uh, plumb lines, okay? I'm gonna go from the edge of the apple straight up, and you know what? It just about lines up. So if I get the edge of that apple, which I'm, you know, guesstimating more or less, but the truth is, you can pretty much do a pretty good job of estimating the size of that apple once you get the height, okay? So straight up from here is gonna be the edge of that vase. Make sense? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, um, once again, I'm gonna go back to that consistency. Apple size. Now I'm going to go to the apple, okay, arm straight out, then I'm going to turn it and get the width of the vase. So I have the left side of the vase hitting at this tip, the right side of the vase hitting at this tip. Does that make sense? Now I'm just going to translate those distances there there. So here's the width of that vase. Uh, normally when I'm doing a drawing or something of a, of a still life like this, I'm going to draw a center line. See that line was just to kind of compare the height at the very beginning. But we've got the center line of the vase coming right down here. Really, to find the height of that orange, um, I wouldn't do anything more than a plumb line, maybe straight across from the bot or top of the orange, and seeing where it intersects with that apple. So that might be helpful. And then we can see that vase comes down. height of the orange will be right about there. It intersects kind of a, right in there. It also comes in front of the base. So we're developing size relationships with the base, the fruit, and uh, I come up here. This is going to be the top of the base. Now, in this particular case, my eye level is hitting right about at the top of the vase, so I'm not going to see any of that hole looking down into the vase. You might be tempted to do that even when you don't see it. Um, I tend to just go with what I see and what's reality. It happens that it's lined up with the top there. Um, in some cases, when you're down below, you're going to actually show the underside of the vase, right? just depends on the situation, but in this case, it's just straight. Um, this goes out there. I mean, I can use the tool. I can use this using the same techniques. I could even just go to the width of this, get it, make it so that the width lines up with the base, and then I can check other distances, like I can check the width of the top. So I've got the top. There and there. So you get the top of the base there. Got the little ring that's coming out. Now, as far as the complete accuracy of this thing, well, it's still dependent on how careful I am um, with the rest of my drawing, you know? What, I, what I'm doing with this thing is not assuring that I'm going to have a perfectly accurate drawing, but I'm assuring that I'm going to have very close to accurate proportions, relationships. Anyway, that's how this thing works. I mean, you can take it to all kinds of levels of intricacy and how you actually make this thing work for you. Um, but that's the actual, uh, you know, that's the concept behind it. So appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something from it and good luck.